Hey, it's Pastor Joe here, and it's time for our e-blast for Tuesday. So I'm glad you can just take a few minutes with me, and let's just talk about some things. Uh, one, it's so good to be here Sunday. For those who are here, you know that the, the spirit in both services was just, uh, it was, it was, it was, I, I, lack of better terminology, the Lord was there. What great times it is. And, you know, I, I don't know uh, where you are in regard to attending your fellowship and your church and supporting it with your, your physical presence, but that's very important. Uh, I know we're living in times of sickness and disease. We all should take responsibilities. And I encourage you just to say this. If you can be here, you should be here, you know, and, and you should come be a part of what God's doing. Because uh, for lack of better words as well, again, in regard to this, uh, it was just it was awesome. It was fun to be here in church, uh, to see you, to fellowship with you, to see you fellowship with each other, to see you praying with one another, encouraging one another, laughing together. There's just nothing that beats the fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, nothing. You, you can watch live stream TV and, 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 and those things and watch preachers on TV. You'll never get uh, the experience that you get from just being there and being a part of what God is doing, doing and going on. But it was an awesome day. Uh, it's good to to see God's people love and, and support each other. Uh, <clears throat> let me just address a couple of things. One is the situation in Haiti. I know COVID and Afghanistan is getting a lot of attention, but we have brothers and sisters in Haiti, just the nation itself, all that they've gone through uh, just with, the, with the, the, the earthquake and followed up right in the midst of all that was that tropical storm hurricane that went through there. So we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters there and, and the church there uh, to, to, to see God's presence and grace and deliverance and glory there. There's a lot of suffering, and many times we're sitting in our air-conditioned environments. We don't always realize how hard it is for, for the rest of the world to experience the things that they're having to go through. The other one is Afghanistan. I mean, things are getting so bad for the church in Afghanistan. They've already been, they've already been slaughtering, torturing, uh, raping, uh, destroying as many Christian lives as they possibly can. And it is extremely heartbreaking. So we need to continue to pray for the work of God in the people that are in Afghanistan. Not only for our own citizens and civilians that are caught there, for those who've helped us for the 20 years that we've been there, but, Lord, but for the country in itself. I mean, God has been working in Afghanistan. And the underground church has been been pretty vibrant. Uh, but I, I know that right now I'm hearing reports from different, different missionary groups and the, of the of the struggle that's begun and the torture that's begun. They're saying that sometimes the, the soldiers will just simply take your phone and see if you have the Bible app on your phone, and you could die for that and behead, be, be beheaded, imprisoned, and tortured for that. You know, uh, I mean, think about that for a moment in the context of, of, of where we are and the freedoms that we've been blessed with. And even though those are being infringed upon regularly by the, by the world around us and the government around us, it's become less sensitive to the, to the church and the ministry of the church. Uh, we have it pretty, pretty good in comparison. Uh, <clears throat> I want to share this prayer with you that was sent to me. Uh, I got it off the, off, off of my Facebook post page that, uh, it was posted by Anne Graham Lotz. The, Anne Graham Lotz is the daughter of Billy Graham. And uh, she posted this prayer. And it says, Prayer for Afghanistan. And she encourages others to agree with the basic premise of the prayer. She says, here's the prayer. <clears throat> Creator of the universe, ruler of all, Lord of nations, are you not the judge of all the earth? If my heart is broken and shattered over what's taking place in Afghanistan, what must your great heart feel? So I come to you and I plead for your mercy and for your, for your people who are not hiding in basements and caves and any hole they can find, knowing that the demonic forces will not stop until your people are found and slaughtered. So I pray for your people, followers of Jesus, to be supernaturally protected, supernaturally delivered. Send your angel armies to surround your people, as you did for Elisha in 2 Kings 6. Blind the enemy so they cannot locate your people that are hiding. Didn't you teach us yourself that when we pray, we are to pray that we would be delivered from evil, Matthew 6. So deliver your people by any means, please, Lord. But if you do not, and if you allow your people to be slaughtered, then I pray that you would give dying grace to each and every one of them, men, women, children. Fill them with your supernatural peace. Give them a vision of heaven opened up for them as you did for Stephen in Acts chapter 7. Open their eyes to see you, Lord Jesus, standing at the right hand of the Father, waiting to welcome them home and give them a martyr's crown. And then I pray, yes, I do, for the fullness of your wrath to fall upon the evil perpetrators, whether they are in Kabul or Tehran or Washington, D.C., holy God. I know your heart. I know you hear this prayer, Lord. Now I wait to see how you will answer. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Surely it's time for you to be glorified in all the earth. 
for the sake of your great name. Amen. That's certainly a prayer we should be praying and similar to and agreeing with uh, and praying for the people, not only in Afghanistan, Cuba, and other places where they're being persecuted for their faith. I read this passage today in, in Matthew 139. It says, O oh Lord, for you have searched me and you have known me. You know when I sit down. You know when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down, and you are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there's a word on my tongue, but Lord, you know it all. Now, the Lord, basically that would scare a lot of people when they read that to think that God is that familiar with them and that God knows every intent of their heart and every thought in their mind. But he says, you have enclosed me. In other words, you've protected me behind and before. You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And he goes on and talks about if I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to, to the pits, you're there. If I take the wings of the dawn, you're there. If I go to the remote parts of the earth, you're there. These are words of encouragement. These are words that we should rest and thank God that his presence is everywhere around us. And we should be transparent with God. The Bible says we worship God in spirit and truth. And God knows my thoughts. I can be honest with God about what's going on in my life. I can be honest with God about the anxieties, the fears, the sin. God knows all these things anyway. So why shouldn't I come to him and lay everything out before him? He says, God, this is, these are wonderful thoughts. Verse 17 says, how precious are your thoughts to me, O God? How vast is the sum of all of them? If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. In other words, God, even though you know all these things about me, you love me and you care for me. How wonderful those thoughts are. That's the kind of prayers we should be praying for our own life and for those around us, for those overseas, for those who are struggling, for those who are, Lord, you know those people, you know their life, you protect them, God, you watch over them. The same for us. I will not be bound by fear. I will not be bound by anxieties. I will not be bound by the stresses that this world continues to seek to impose upon my, my emotional life. Much of what we're facing today, I've said it in the last few weeks, is a spiritual onslaught on every level against our lives. But you have to realize you have God's presence in your life today. He is near. He's standing there. He forms you in your mother's wombs. He cares for you. He's concerned about you. He surrounds you on every side. And there's nothing that scripture says that you'll ever go through, nothing you place you will ever go to that he is not with you and around you if you love Jesus. So that's the word I have for you today. Please continue to pray for these folks that we're talking about. Continue to pray for your church, your pastors. And let's continue to see what God has for us in the days ahead of us. A couple of announcements. Wednesday night service tomorrow night. Don't miss it. Uh, we, we had some complications last week. Uh, we live stream one service, couldn't live stream those. It's, it, it's not possible for us to simultaneously live stream both Wednesday night services. And so we're not, we're just not going to live stream Wednesday night. We encourage you anyway to be in person, to be in service, to come be a part of the actual service yourself. Most of us can do that, but for convenience sake, we choose not to. Uh, you can ask those folks in Afghanistan what's convenient today for them. Man, they would they would love and desire and have a kind of passion of freedom that you experience in this country. But yet so often we just take it for granted what God's done for us. Get to church. Come be a part of what God is doing. Then also our marriage retreat. People say, were you still going to do it? I, I figure by October there's going to be a lot of change in the scenario and the scene. We are staying in touch. If by any means we have to cancel the marriage retreat, we will. Deposits will be refunded or we'll just push the date up a little bit till we know that's a little bit better environment for that. So, But I would say if you're not registered for the marriage retreat, don't let all this COVID stuff scare you. All right, get registered. Come be a part of what God's doing. It'll bless your life. It'll bless your home. It'll bless your family and your marriage. Amen. Uh, September 10th for everybody in ministry at either campus, Magnolia Spring Campus. Remember that we have a meeting at the Magnolia Campus. All of us are going together. We're going to talk about the vision uh, God's given us for this fall and for the spring of next year. Uh, what the Lord is doing. Give you some more inside information to things that we came up with and found and discovered from the Lord in our, our our last retreat here last month. So a lot going on. We want to share it with you. All the leaders of ministry need to be a part of this as well as your team. So invite your teams. If you're not going to be able to make this leadership, we have you on the list to provide food for you. We're getting catered by Spring Creek Barbecue. If you're not going to be here, then we need to know so we can cancel that plate. All right. So let one of your pastors know, one of your ministry leaders know, say, I'm not going to be able to make that, that September leadership dinner at Magnolia Campus so that we can 
not to buy something for someone who's not going to be there. So help us with that regard by reporting. Uh, don't say I'm going to try. Usually if I say I'm going to try, that means I'm just lying. I'm, I'll, I'll, in other words, anything can come up and stop me. Come be a part of what God's doing. These are the best days for ministry, and so many people are missing out on what God is doing. Continue to pray for our church body and our fellowship and people we know in and through our church, uh, like Brian Birmingham, who's still in the hospital and dealing with COVID, the Smiths, Charlie and Sean. We're believing uh, God for miracles and in every, all these people's lives. Thank you for praying for all these people. And we have put out a lot of prayer requests in the last, uh, the last several months. I thank you, each and every one of you, when you take the time to not just read that prayer request, but take that moment, pause for that moment, pray that prayer to the Father for those people's names that are coming across. If we're all praying like that, and there's hundreds of us on that list, if not a thousand, because it goes out to lots of different areas and a lot of people send it on to other prayer lists, let's just agree with God and see what God will do when God's people pray. So let's continue to pray for that as well. All right, let me look at my list, make sure these old blind eyes didn't miss anything at all. All right, well, praise God. I think that's it. I look forward to seeing you in church. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. So come be a part of what God's doing. And know this, that your pastors love you. We believe God is doing some great things in our midst. Let's don't miss this opportunity.